So welcome to today's fatherheart.tv webcast. It is Wednesday, I think January the 11th, 2017. And, and my name is Barry Adams, if you're watching this after the fact. And I'm with my dear friend, Larry Pearson from Lion Sword Solutions. And uh, today we are just, um, just kind of pondering, I think, aloud. It's like we're having a coffee in, in a local coffee shop and, and just kind of pondering with people who are in the webcast, our friends and family, and you, maybe if you're listening afterwards, uh, about the the earth-shaking ramifications of, of sonship. And um, one of the things, that, you know, just to, to, to introduce you to, to Larry and Jacqueline, they are dear friends, and, and they, I, we've known you guys for years, right? We've kind of run in the same circles and gotten closer the last few years and uh just they they have a that you would if you would say best described as, as a prophetic ministry would that be fair yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so lion sword solutions would be uh, more of a prophetic ministry and of course you know we're going to unpack what actually you know all that, that kind of all those definitions today a little bit more but um, one of the things that i do want to mention to, to people that Larry and Jacqueline and their their ministry they they do um, uh, prophetic coaching as well and Larry, Larry he certainly does that online it's he's a man after my own heart where he, he connects with people all over the world and he speaks into their life he speaks into their destiny he just uh, you know and maybe you know you, you can speak to that but uh, I just encourage you if anybody wants to connect with Larry and Jacqueline on, on that level lionsword.ca is, is their website and uh, yeah just um, they're in my mind and this is just my own you know this isn't anything Larry and I talked about but um, when we when we have the prophetic and and it's it's rooted in the father's love I, I just find that is just such a, a beautiful thing because sometimes you know the emphasis can be on uh, other parts of the kingdom life, which is totally fine, but I've so appreciated Larry and Jacqueline and their their um, just seeing the prophetic through this revelation of sonship, and so I I'm just so pleased to have Larry and Jacqueline on the webcast today, and of course Larry's he's a uh, you know both Larry and Jacqueline are, are on, and every, you know we see their names in the participants, and we so appreciate that, and and. Uh, yeah, so if you want to find out more about Larry and Jacqueline, what they do, go to lionsword.ca or connect with them on Facebook, Facebook Live, all those things. So enough of all of that, Larry, you know, just a warm welcome to the webcast. And and I'm just looking forward to what uh, the Lord's going to do. And just as a, I made reference to it earlier, uh, Larry and I, because we live within about 20 miles or 20 miles, 20 minute drive of each other. We, we usually meet halfway at a, at a Tim Hortons coffee shop. And uh, I'm telling you, some of the, our conversations, you know, it's not like there's anything planned. We're just connecting after not seeing each other for a while. And just the, the sense of God's presence and where what we explore is absolutely amazing. And uh, oftentimes when we've been together, we, we've, just, we've just said, you know, that, uh, you know, we should do this on, online. We should kind of just ponder like we do in a coffee shop and and so this is kind of our our attempt to connect this way virtually with you all around the world and uh just see what papa does and just see where we he leads us today so um so welcome larry and um would you mind opening in prayer my bro and just sure, sure to absolutely. see what That's awesome. yeah yeah it seems like it's come to that. We better pray. <laughs> <laughs> Father, oh, we, we just rejoice in who you are. We rejoice in all that Jesus has accomplished for us and as us as he came as a man to um, redeem us, redeem humanity, redeem us and, and call us to your heart, Father. And I just bless everyone on the broadcast. I bless your presence to invade us, to Holy Spirit. We just welcome your beautiful presence, your beautiful ability to um, commune and communicate with us and through us. And Lord, we just honor all that you have done 
in our lives and in the lives of each and every one here. Lord, I thank you for Barry and Ann and, and their family. I thank you for these pioneers. I thank you that that um, he pushed me over into um, doing stuff online. And Lord, I, I thank you for the friendship. I thank you that he's a friend of God and he's a friend to us. And, and we just honor him. We honor everyone on the broadcast. We thank you that you will have your way. We surrender our faculties to the spirit of truth. And mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, you are... You know, what I do on ours is like when, wherever the Holy Spirit is declared Lord, he is. Mm -hmm. So we thank you, Holy Spirit, for being Lord, revelator, the revealer of, of Christ mm -hmm. in us all. And we give you the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for yeah. your presence. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> one, of, one of the disclosures is um jacqueline and i and i barry too we're we're, we're presence driven um people i don't know say presence driven ministry but um we're we're hungry for the abiding glory of, of his presence mm -hmm. and the person of, of who god is for us and in us and around us and and so um yeah we just love the Father Heart Ministry, the Father Heart Revelation. We love um, whenever He interrupts our 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 human journey, and and I love hanging out with Barry because, you know, um, when we we get um, we're I think it's one of those times when you, you you're able to to meet with a friend and just be real, and 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 just unveil questions that you might have that maybe you wouldn't do in a in a different venue but we're just who we are and and ask some pretty interesting questions pretty deep heartfelt um questions and and it's amazing how god just allows us gives us permission to just unpack and say well what what does sonship mean and and really you know especially what does sonship mean in the prophetic and i see um my good friend dan chapel which is another great great prophetic guy and and a you know a, a hidden father in the prophetic but a really good voice but i remember years ago um i can blame him and blame the lord on him um years ago in belleville where i used to live two hours east of toronto in a conference you know i'm you know it's in the midst of the the outpouring of toronto and i'm you know you know the, the the hurricane of of the move of god at the very inception and the beginning of it and he was in a conference there at a little anglican church that i was attending that was in renewal that was in the moving spirit and um he brought me up and gave a prophetic word to me and he said um you know I'm, it was really the father speaking through him one of my first um times of really you know could i've been already been a pentecostal for six years and really you know understanding what holy spirit was and i and i thought i knew everything about what holy spirit was because i watched benny hinn on a video so i'm i'm good to go right <laughs> and then toronto happened but but dan was in a meeting and he brought me up and he said first and foremost no matter what office ever gets um identified in you first and foremost you're my son and and i never really even heard that kind of language in 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 my church experience or my or anything but what that did it it just locked me into a really healthy um foundation of 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 sonship and it's interesting because i think chronologically that happened and then when i went to toronto and i was in a conference in toronto um, I think it was Larry Randolph and Mark DuPont were, were ministering up at the front and there was just powerful, powerful ministry going on in the spirit. And, you know, there was thousands of people there and, and God just crashed on me in the seat. Nobody prayed for me, but all of a sudden I get thrown out of the seat and I'm down on the floor for however long, which, you know, doing carpet time was Toronto's, um, and still is Toronto's, uh, way <laughs> the holy spirit you know puts us makes us lay down into green pastures well after i got up um 
something awoke in me and it was like all of a sudden I wasn't looking through my own eyes, but I was like I was looking through someone else's eyes. And at that time, it was like the prophetic awoke in me, like the revelatory realm, the supernatural realm became ever so um, enhanced and, and, and very real. But I'm so grateful from God and to Dan Chapel, my friend, our friend, um, that God used him to really knit my heart together with being a son. Now, it's not been a, an even road, as like all of us, but first and foremost, he always brings me back to um, understanding sonship, especially in the prophetic, because because in the prophetic, it's so easy to um, push for identity and the gifting, and and you know be more accurate and you know get get deeper in the prophetic, get deeper in the gifting, and we're you know we're called in the scripture to to pursue prophecy, to pursue you know that you would we would prophesy instead of you know pursue love and, and desire the gifts, especially that we would prophesy, it says in Corinthians. But if I'm not doing that from a foundation of sonship, then every all the dynamics can happen that make me yearn to be recognized. you you know, the, it 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 activates um, the orphan dynamic, which on this broadcast um, there's a ton of um, truth about that. Which which you know, but the Lord in His infinite way, when He's dealing with us, I believe He's dealing with He's stripping off of us and out of us all the orphan tendencies so that sonship can can arise no matter if i'm an evangelist or a prophet or or you know teacher ultimately it's the manifestation of the spirit of his son i love and and have been really um i guess on a on a a consistent quest of really where the apostle said the apostle paul said um it pleased the father to reveal the spirit of his son in me now, you know, the Apostle Paul is, you know, kind of like the super apostle of the Bible, but he didn't say, you know, it pleased the Father to reveal my great apostolic ministry. It was to reveal the spirit of his son. And, and no matter what we're doing, it has to be the spirit of his son. And, our, and, and to me, the quest of, of understanding and unpacking sonship um, is is crucial and vital, and that's why I love getting out with Gary with Barry because um, you know you, you wrestle through things and we have fun doing it. And yeah, well, and and I I mean what you said is just amazing, and and I you know one of the things that 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 I I find that I I wonder about sometimes that you know of course it's you know I've talk, talked to Larry about this is that you know where. We we so identify even say with with, for, with giftings or ministry office right where we 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 put those titles on and yet you know from um you know I'm, I'm not a theologian so if I'm kind of off theologically you can correct me but um, from my understanding there's not going to be any need for evangelists when we get on the other side of eternity you know when we are with with the the great shepherd there might not be a need for pastors and. And, and the prophetic voice of Jesus, the spirit of prophecy itself, we might not need prophets and, and teachers and all those things. So, you know, one of the things that, you know, and of, of course, all those things are valid. But as, as Larry was saying, I, I think if we are somehow um, enamored by the, the office, by the gifting, uh, and not understand that the core identity that we're going to have forever throughout eternity is sons and daughters to the Father. Um, that is the big deal. That is the salvation that the angels desire to look into. You know, they are ministering servants to the heirs of salvation, and that's us. And, you know, I even think about it when, you know, the, the time when Jesus sent his disciples out to heal the sick, cast out devils, and raise the dead. And they come back to Jesus and say, whoa, even the demons are, are subject to us. And Jesus said to them, he said, don't rejoice that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your name's written in heaven. And really that writing in heaven is, is that, that place that we have of sonship, uh, of, of being belonging to the Father that is eternal, that is unshakable. So even then he's saying, you know, don't get too wowed by the, 
the 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 signs and wonders which are you know they're all good in themselves but you know we're never called to follow the signs right they're supposed to follow us and so i think that's what you know we're, we're just wanting to unpack with with you guys and you know we just encourage you on the chat feel free to 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 comment um you know we are talking about this the earth shaking ramification uh, ramifications of sonship you know on the earth and you know what does it actually mean to to live in that place of, of being sons and daughters to Yahweh? Like if if that doesn't excite us, what what can actually excite us this side of heaven? I don't know. Any thoughts, Larry? Exactly. And yeah, like it's 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 gotta be earth shaking. It's gotta have an impact. And and for me, you know, walking through. The quest of sonship, the quest of knowing God, um, you know, for me, a lot of it has, has, he's, he's, I think, constantly reforming us and refining us. I think we're in the midst of um, this, this silent, but, but not, not really silent, um, um, the groundswell of a reformation is going on, but I think it's the reformation of our heart. He's reforming us from any orphan mindsets and into sonship and and the the gifting or the office basically are what you know what people have said they're just tools they're mm -hmm. they're um the the job description they're, they're the function more than than identity our identity is we're, we're a son in the kingdom of of, of god what and, and for me i think the only way the earth is going going to be impacted i'm starting to see is not by my naturalistic understanding of sonship mm -hmm. but by a real deep revelation of my union with the spirit of the sun my union with the spirit of the sun really didn't source in my my growing up as you know larry pearson I loved, and you know, I'll probably stretch a few things here, but we go after this when we, when we revelate together. Um, a friend of mine, Paul from California, um, was talking about the revealed sons of God, stuff like that, and starting to get, you know, a real deeper understanding and revelation about it. And he said, um, and he went through different parts of the scripture, stuff like that, but he, 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 he unpacked the beginning of Ben Elohim. And so he's, you know, revealed sons is Ben Elohim, right? Ben Elohim. And and so he says, and he did this in Wisconsin. And, you know, I'm listening and, you know, it's Paul preaching and it's good stuff and the presence of the Lord's moving. And he goes, take my friend here from, you know, from Niagara on the lake in, in Ontario. Um, he is a Ben Elohim in the form of Larry Pearson. And when he said that, something clicked in my innermost being, in my sense of self, and what it began to awaken in me was my union with Elohim. But also the fact and the truth is that every single one here, if we know Jesus, we have been quickened and brought into the heart of Elohim. So we've got barry adams he's he's a so ben, barry is a ben elohim in the form of barry adams and and we get what i see is is there's a necessary ingredient where we go through our healing journey of getting barry and larry and and, and there might be a mary here um getting those aspects of our of our outer man healed up but that's not the end of the journey that's the means to i think the revelation of our union with the spirit of the sun our our being brought into the communion with elohim you know mm -hmm. it says fix your eyes on things above where your life is hid with the anointed one with christ in god so we are all in god we are all right now in elohim and we're the offspring of Elohim. But if I only think, and what I started to ponder is like, if I only think that I'm 
um, in my earthly aspect, okay, Larry Pearson is a son of God, you know, a son of God. I'm not the son of God, but I am an a son of God. We all are sons and daughters of God. But if we can see by revelation, you know, flesh and blood didn't reveal it to us, but by revelation that we are a part of um, the aspect of Elohim and and awaken to the divine nature you know we're partakers of a divine nature but i think we've been talked into somehow that it's in the sweet by and by in the millennial reign but it's not in the here and now but mm -hmm. i think that again back to earth shaking ramifications of what revealed sons revealed sons that are pouring out the glory of eternity here on earth as it is in eternity so be it on the earth not you know it, it kind of takes it out of this mystical or this this ethereal type of thing we have eternity in in our hearts that's what the bible talks about in ecclesia in ecclesiastics and so for me i'm on this quest now not to not to get so um um no earthly good because i'm so you know, I want to sit in the mountain saying kumbaya, but but there's an aspect of the authentic me in Jesus that I need to discover. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, when, when you say that, Larry, I, I, you know, I often think, you know, you know, sometimes we talk about the what, you know, the the kind of who who we are uh, and in our identity in Christ. But it's it's. I think when we really start to understand the why, um, I think it just it just gives us the ability to believe that this is the truth, right? This is not a just a happy thoughts that we're thinking and we're all trying to, you know, uh, kind of. Sometimes I think we almost operate like it's this other life that we can't expect anything in uh, until we we go to heaven, and and I just think when we start to understand the why. And, you know, 1 John 3, 1 says, How great is the love the Father has lavished on us, uh, that we should be called the children of God, exclamation point. And that is what we are, exclamation point. And I, I think the more we, we begin to understand that that's, that's the whole point. You know, that's why Jesus died on a cross 2,000 years ago, to bring many sons to glory, you know, to, to completely reconcile us with the Father so that we could be, you know, hid with Christ in God. You know, Jesus prayed in John 17, I in them, you and me, Father. And, you know, so the, the, the things, when, when we, even the language that, you know, you're, when you say, when you talk about Ben Elohim, and, you know, we don't use that language because it's it's kind of, a, you know, it's been referred to in the Old Testament, and, and it's just like, but when we start to understand that God, Almighty God, the first person of the Trinity is Elohim, he's Yahweh, we start to understand that we carry his seed in us, that we are a new creation. First, you know, Jesus is the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. When we start getting this, I just think it, it just, it totally does take us to another dimension in, in the, you know, in the heavenly places. Like, you know, even when Jesus taught his disciples to, to pray the Lord's prayer, the ones that can ask the father to bring his kingdom on earth, are sons and daughters, because we pray our father who art in heaven, you know, and it's the authority of sons and daughters on planet earth that can ask the father to, to establish his kingdom on earth, just like it is in heaven. So, yeah, man, I'm with you. And this is these are the, some of the things that, you know, Larry and I revelate about over coffee and in the coffee shops. It's just amazing. Yeah, and it's 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 awesome and I think it's really necessary on some levels too because it helps facilitate um, awakening. You know, awakening of, of what we already are. You know, awakening out of the the you know even the apostle paul says you know why are you acting like mere men <laughs> you know in a sense why why are we just acting like mere humans when we've actually been united with god there's you know jesus is the perfect model of the god man and and so now we've been brought into the realm of god the humanity is has been linked up to and we um 
have been given from God dominion in both realms. You know, Jesus has now got authority in heaven and on earth. So now we are in Jesus. We are in Christ. We are seated in heavenly realms in Christ, but we have that delegated authority to mm -hmm. execute or bless the manifestation of the eternal kingdom, the manifestation of, of righteousness, the manifestation of peace, of joy, can be the reality that we co-create here on mm -hmm. earth. Now, it's, it's not, you know, most of us have not been brought up in church that way. You know, it's it's basically been been you know go to Sunday, go to meeting them, and you know we walked in the light that we have, but the the light is expanding. We've been given, I think he's taken more ground in us, and now the eternal light is shining, and we're beginning to understand more. We're beginning to comprehend from the Spirit more that that we're not what we used to be when the cross came. And we got planted in his death and planted in his resurrection. That did something in us. And we, we by faith, um, begin to comprehend that that drug addict that I used to be no longer exists. The only place that it would exist is in my mind. The only place that, that, that Larry Pearson really, that fearful kid, that paranoid kid, only still exists in his mind. And, and the new has come. Now, there's been a process, like most of us, we have to go through a healing journey, but the healing journey isn't the end. It's the means so that I can awaken. And I love, you know, in a sense, because uh, coming together with Barry and, and others, where we can um, facilitate um, calling out the treasure that's already there. I love what Chris Vallotton from Bethel talks about. You know, the, the prophetic isn't there to point out the sin. And I think that that's kind of been the mode of operation for, for years. But it's, it's more about calling out the treasure of our union with the Spirit of the Son, our calling out uh, who we are in, in the perspective of the Father, who we are as being seated in this eternal being that is now my father and, and being able to, um, I, the, another teacher said this and I loved it. It's a, uh, um, and I don't know if we, because when I heard it, it's like, oh, I've never really heard that being said before, but um, what if we can celebrate what's right about each of us instead of, trying to fix the problem or trying to fix the fault or trying to fix the issue. What if I can celebrate what I know to be right in mm -hmm. the resurrected Barry Adams? Mm -hmm. That, that I, can, I can call forth the son of righteousness. I can call forth the, the by revelation. I think the, the, the prophetic is really there to illuminate pieces or, 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 or um, slivers of light in, in who each of us is, that revelatory realm is really just a, 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 a place to awaken to what we already are and what we already have in Jesus. Hmm. Again, I think I'm bound. No, no, I, I, no, but I think this is where, you know, you know, where, where John says, as Jesus is, so are we in this world, right? And, you know, I mean, Jesus himself said, if they did it to me, they're going to do it to you. And we are so, you know, our, our, our lineage, our inheritance is so connected to the life of Jesus. And he, you know, I and them, he, you and me, father, when he prayed to his father, it's like, I just believe, you know, when, when Larry and I have talked about this stuff at, at the coffee shop, it's just like, I mean, when we see each other, are we, am I seeing, you know, Larry, the son of the living God, you know, or am I seeing, you know, Larry, do, you know, and Barry, we're doing our best, we're trying to get through this life, and, you know, and I just have, I've just looked here from um, 2 Corinthians 5, in the Amplified Version, you know, Paul's writing at verse 16, he says, so from now on, we regard no one from a human point of view, according to worldly standards and values. 
And then he goes on in, in verse 17 to say, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that is grafted in, joined to him by faith in him as a savior, he is a new creature, reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit. The old things, the previous moral and spiritual condition have passed away. Behold, new things have come because spiritual awakening, there's that word, brings a new life. And so I think this, these are the things that, you know, oftentimes, you know, when I am sharing about our identity in Christ and sons and daughters to the Father, you know, oftentimes I feel like I'm, like I'm stating the obvious to people. And I think this is, this is what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I learned that in, in Sunday school. Thanks. You know, I was five when I found out God loved me and I'm his child, but it's like, you know, do we really grasp, you know, from the eyes of the inner man, the, 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 you know, the eyes of our heart, which we talked about last week on the webcast, do we really get the, the what it actually means to be sons and daughters to Yahweh and join heirs with Jesus and heirs of God? And, and I think that's, that's the, I think if we don't get that, if we, we think we've got it, but then we go on in our life pursuit of other things that will kind of prop up our identity, I think it just shows us that maybe there's just a, an opportunity for more of an awakening of our, our true spiritual identity.